Hello, I'm Jeff Holliday. I'm bringing you another video. This time I'd like to talk to you about logic. Um, and this is kind of a, a hard thing for many people to grasp, especially on the issue of genetic engineering, uh, transgenic crops, this sort of thing, um, because it is such an emotional issue and people can very, very quickly find themselves overwhelmed by a position of safety, the cautionary principle, as many people think, uh, that we have to focus specifically on finding danger, not necessarily whether there actually is any danger or not. And that seems to be where this, this diametric focus starts to go towards in this conversation. It's actually very damaging to a good uh, communication. Um, I find myself perpetually at odds with people who when I tell them that I would like to engage with them, even politely so, and I would really like to talk about what their concerns are, perhaps with what I understand and what they understand, we can find a way to communicate together. That rarely ever happens. And it's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. Before I really get into the meat of this thing, though, I, I want to make a quick disclaimer. I do not possess a, a degree in genetics. I don't. I am... <clears throat> I would like to think I'm a scientist, but at the same time, I am still in college. I am still very much uh, studying these things and learning about these things. So I cannot speak as an expert, and that's one of the main reasons why when I do these videos, I'm very careful not to try and give you a specific answer, because I'm not qualified to give that. I'm not. I'm qualified as a human being to try and urge you to ask questions, and that's what I want. I'm not trying to tell you how things are, and I'm not trying to shove a dogma down your throat. I want you to question. And if you find at the end of the of taking the time to actually question these things that you still feel the way you do, and it's very different from how I feel, that's fine. That's totally fine. So with that out of the way, we have to talk about some problems that you have when you're talking with these people who are very much against genetic engineering technology, because that's really what it's about. And it's not about genetically modified food, it's about a technology that's being used in a way with food, and that's that's a whole nother... Maybe I'll do a video on, on vocabulary lessons on how exactly we should be talking about these things. Maybe. Uh, we'll see. But, so, what are the most common things that most people would... I'm uh, saying most a lot, but what are some of the more common things that when you talk to somebody who is vehemently against genetically modified food, what do they bring up? Well, uh, you have some pretty heavy hitter names out there. Uh, one of them is uh, Seralini. Seralini is this French scientist who uh, has been putting out for years now papers that don't get published ever, except for once, uh, that show that there's damage to organs in these animals because of genetically modified food. Um, and he got a paper published, and people love to go off about it. But it got retracted because, and I hate to say it, it was bad science. It's just bad science. It's badly done. Non-replicatable results means that the, it's it's it's. Should somebody do a Seralini study again? Yes, absolutely. Of course they should. I think many people should. But I have a feeling that they're probably going to find exactly what everybody knows, which is it was bullshit. Sadly, there are much better videos out there from much smarter, smarter people than me that can tell you exactly what was wrong with the Seralini study. And I I urge you, I'll put some links at the bottom of the video, and you can check them out yourself. Brilliant stuff. So there's that problem. There's also one with a man named Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey Smith is probably one of my favorite people on the internet. Uh, he's, he's a brilliant personality because of how manufactured and completely fake he is. It, it's, it's incredible. He's published these uh, um, e-books. I'm sure some people have heard of them. Seeds of Death. Genetic... Roulette? Genetic roulette. Yes, genetic roulette. Uh, full of fear and, ooh, terrifying little bits of evidence here and there. I think even genetic roulette got turned into a really bad documentary. I think so. I bet I could probably find another really good video of somebody tearing it apart. In fact, I seem to remember the Academic Review 
ripping that one to shreds. Maybe I'll put a link to that too. Great stuff. Hilarious. Hilarious. But the reason why Jeffrey Smith is so funny is at least Seralini was a scientist. He He's a degree holder. He should know better. Jeffrey Smith doesn't have a degree. He's never taught anything in his life except apparently dancing? I think he was a dancing instructor. And in fact, in 1996, he was part of this huge convention where he was going to try and get people to do tantric meditation that they were going to hold the world into peace. And he believed, and I'm not joking, I'm not making this up, but I'll put a picture up of Jeffrey Smith yogically flying. He thinks he can fly. Yet, somehow, when I want to have a, a factual conversation with somebody about science and about a scientific topic like genetic engineering, they're bringing up things that are written about a guy, that written from a guy who thinks he can ohm his ass off the ground. That doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Uh, also, he's I guess he runs some ridiculous organization that claims they're all about responsible technology. And, uh, I, I can't stop thinking about that picture of him. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> here's another one. Big, 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 big one. Lots of people know this one. Natural News. Naturalnews.com. Ah, oh, it's run by Mike Adams, the Health Ranger. Ha <laughs> ha! GQ poster boy for a healthier tomorrow. No more vaccinations, no more fluoridation. Absolutely not. Mike Adams, he's on the case. Knows what he's supposed to do. Mike Adams doesn't think AIDS is real. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a, I'm not a virus specialist. Uh, I don't study diseases. It's not my thing. But for some reason, there is something in the Kool Aid that these people drink that makes them start going from okay, well, Jim was dangerous. Jim was dangerous. Fluoride's dangerous. Okay, uh, vaccines are starting to make me uncomfortable. Oh, by the way, AIDS doesn't exist. Huh? <laughs> Why? Why? That doesn't, it seems so completely disjointed and, and strange that you would go, chemicals, chemicals, you're worried about chemicals. Okay, good, I understand that. Be worried about chemicals, fine, you know, precautionary principle, hmm, to suddenly the most researched virus in the history of mankind isn't real. <laughs> and then... The last thing I want to talk about with sources and logic is YouTube documentaries. What is it with people in YouTube documentaries? Just because something's called a documentary doesn't mean it's good. Norman Sporlog, was that his name? The the guy with the, the Super Size Me. And people went and did exactly what he did, and they didn't have all them problems. He's full of shit. He's absolutely full of shit. Most of these documentaries that you see out there, do you think Ancient Aliens is a viable documentary? Well, it's considered a documentary. So it's on YouTube, but you know there's no DVD sales for it, at least in any major retailers, because any day, these days anybody can get their things published. Uh, it's usually probably not a very good outlet for science or something that you want to bring to a discussion where you're trying to really talk about things and break it down. But okay, so sources. You know, sources are a big thing, and I, I really think people should pay attention to their sources when they want to start talking about these things, because if you... If you are willing to embrace some of the more wild and and ridiculous notions that these people espouse and they believe, well, I don't think you're really thinking for yourself, because I, you know, if you believe in yogic flying, fine. I don't want to make fun of you. I don't want to make fun of you. I know, and if that's what you believe, that's fine. Spirituality, whatever it is, people want to do, fine, fine. But if you believe in yogic flying, but you also think that you're qualified to tell me how genetics works, unless you have a, a degree in genetics, I, I'm sorry to say, I think you need to shut the fuck up. I'm not trying to be mean, but, but seriously. So let's, let's get into something else. Economic viability. Here's a great one. Uh, Monsanto, despite the fact that everybody seems to think, I know not everybody, but many, many people seem to think that Monsanto is in control of all the genetic modification in the world. And if something is a GMO, it's made by Monsanto. Ah, oh, Monsanto, 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 Monsanto. So, okay, Monsanto. People are worried about Monsanto. But people start making these it's really interesting claims where they're like, okay, Monsanto wants to kill people. They're selling poison. Well, 
They're a pesticide company. They're a chemical company. Yeah, they do sell poison. They, they glyphosate is a poison. It, it's it's a pesticide. You spray it on things, and they die. That's what it's for. But Roundup Ready crops are not. They're not poison. They're just food. They're just food. Now, whether or not you think Seralini had a point with his his results uh, from his study or not, the notion that Monsanto or any corporation would willingly be trying to kill people, it makes no sense to me. Because last I saw, most corporations were entirely focused on making money. And you don't make money from dead people. In fact, you make more, pun more money if people live as long as possible. That even plays into the whole conspiracy of, well, there's no, no cure for cancer because you make more money by treating it. Well, at least they're still trying to keep people alive. I don't believe that, for the record. I don't believe it at all. But at least they're trying to keep people alive because it still plays into like the basic fundamentals of logic. I don't think that there's a Dr. Doom somewhere in his mountain fortress going, <laughs> I will kill them all with my genetically modified food. That doesn't make any sense. So, uh, and, and, and product-wise, why would anybody make knowingly a product that was dangerous or bad or that if they found out later, if anybody actually, you know, did tests and, you know, tried to find out if this food is, uh, is dangerous or not. By the way, they have hundreds and hundreds of them. But if somebody did, well, then that would hurt their profit margins. And I think it would just be easier for them to develop things that didn't hurt people rather than have to worry about massive litigation because they knowingly let it go by. Again, this is logic. This is something that people don't... They, they, doesn't this make sense? Makes sense to me. Where's the motivation? Where? Why would they? I don't know. But here's a great one. Here's I, this is one of my one of my favorites. It's my second favorite of the the logical questions that you ask yourself before you get into these types of conversations. If somebody, anybody out there, and having at least a little bit of background in learning about genetics as I do. Uh, I can tell you that the process by which of genetic engineering works and testing genetic engineering is, is really not this like it's not this super scary concept and there are plenty of people out there thousands of people who could on their own go and test and magically find out that there is something about genetically modified food that is dangerous and you know what that person would do? They would get a Nobel Prize. They would be hoisted up as a hero. They would be loved by millions and millions of people the world around because they are now bringing forth a huge drastic change for the safety and health of people all over the world. So why hasn't that happened? Because it's not true. Because it's just not there. But that also brings me, lastly, and the one thing I want to finish up with, my favorite, favorite logical question, and I, I can't remember for the life of me who it was on the internet that, uh, in one of these discussion groups that I frequent that posed this one, and it's, it's since become a little bit of a meme between skeptical people. Um, Monsanto is worth a good amount of money, however, the top three oil companies in the world, their revenues, each of them, dwarf Monsanto's by a, a staggering amount. Huge amounts of money that they manage to make. Yet somehow, they cannot cover up climate change. Everybody knows climate change is happening. Fossil fuels, greenhouse gases, all these sorts of things. It is scientific fact at this point. Except for some wing nuts, you know, whatever. But we understand that. We get that. That's cool. But if they don't have enough money, if, they, if it's impossible for them to silence that, then why does it make any sense for people to believe that Monsanto, which magically is the only person who develops genetically modified food, it's not, uh, 
does not have the the they somehow has the sway and the means by which to silence all independent scientists and all of these hundreds and hundreds of studies even the ones conducted by first year grad students in an unaffiliated college using completely independent money oh they got to them too oh they got to them too they showed up with their murder brigade and their reptoid animatrons all brainwashed and controlled because of chemtrails. So that's about it for my little uh, diatribe on logic. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I would like to be able to do more videos more often than I have so far. Two down, you know, probably many to go. Lots of things to talk about. I'd, I'd love to do more of these. I probably should figure out a good name for my videos. Nappy headed dreadlock skeptic. Yeah? No. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Anyway, have a great day. Thank you for your time.